The Super Nintendo is one of the greatest consoles ever made. Over the past couple of years, tons of companies have attempted to remake the Super Nintendo by creating clone systems, and in other cases, creating emulation systems that don't quite represent what the original hardware was capable of. The hype for retro games increased so much that Nintendo themselves created the SNES Classic, a tiny little Super Nintendo emulation box that was loaded with a ton of classic games. But unfortunately, without the ability to utilize original cartridges or add additional titles, it left a lot of gamers out there kind of wanting more. For the hardcore gamers out there, there simply isn't a better option than having an original Super Nintendo hooked up to an old-style CRT TV. But what if somebody released a Super Nintendo that was not only capable of running all those original cartridges, but also gave you those really cool little techniques that emulation devices give you, letting you change the image and adjust the resolution on the fly, making those games work for modern televisions, but giving you that accurate reproduction that you crave from the original hardware. Well, one company thinks they can do it. This is the Analog Super NT, and the folks behind this console were nice enough to send one in for review. Could this be the best way to play SNES cartridges in the modern day? Well, let's find out. The Analog Super NT comes in multiple color designs, but personally, I had to go with the transparent model. I'm a big fan of the way that it looks, and there's also an additional feature to this system that makes the transparent model just that much better. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. On the top of the console, you'll find a power and reset button, but you won't find an eject button, which I guess is kind of okay. I mean, that is something that the original Super Nintendo had, but you really don't miss it that much because it really wasn't needed anyway. As you're probably expecting, you'll also find a cartridge slot that's capable of fitting Super Nintendo and Super Famicom games. Cartridges are easy to put into the system and they're easy to remove, even without the eject button. But one thing I did notice is they really didn't sit flush in there, so they could move around a little bit. As long as you didn't move your system around while you're playing games, it should be fine. And even then, I moved the console around a lot while it was on, and it really didn't cause any problems. In some instances, I heard a little bit of an electric hum when the cartridge moved back a little bit too much, but just don't do that and you should be fine. On the back of the system, you'll find a micro USB USB for power and an HDMI out for video. Unless you're willing to convert the HDMI signal out to some other kind of format, you're pretty much just stuck using HDMI. On the side of the system, there's an SD card slot that's used primarily for firmware upgrades. And we did upgrade the firmware at least once while reviewing the system, and it was a pretty easy process. But I think in the future, this SD card slot might get used for a lot of other things, but we'll have to see what happens down the road. And finally, there's two SNES controller ports on the front that can be used for original SNES controllers and also a number of peripherals. But right off the bat, there's a couple of things that aren't going to work with this system. For one, you're probably not going to be able to get the Super Scope to work on here because you're likely using a modern television and, well, the whole thing just isn't very compatible. Also, if you happen to be one of the lucky people out there that actually own an SNES Exertainment bike, due to the fact that there isn't an expansion port on the bottom of the Super NT, well, you simply won't be able to plug in that whole lifestyle box underneath the console. And for the exact same reason, you won't be able to play the Satellaview, which I don't think many of you are planning on doing anyway. But don't worry, because what's included with this system is something actually pretty cool. You get an 8-bit do SNES controller with the SNES wireless Bluetooth adapter. That means you'll be able to run this game system anywhere you want from a pretty big distance. I've already done a review on this controller in the past, and I was a really big fan of it, so it's really nice to see it bundled with this console. You can use the adapter on virtually anything that has an SNES controller adapter input, and you can also use the controller on anything that connects through Bluetooth or even USB. It's a pretty robust controller and setup, so it's nice to just see that here. And for the hardcore gamers of you out there that might be worried about input lag, well with this setup you really don't have to worry about it. In my prior tests with the older controllers and even this one, latency is near impossible to detect between this and a real Super Nintendo controller hooked up with a wire. Now that all that's out of the way, let's talk about what this system does when it tries to run a Super Nintendo game. Well folks, guess what? It runs them effortlessly. If you didn't know you were looking at a system that wasn't a real Super Super Nintendo, you'd probably be mistaken into thinking it was. Although the really big difference here is that this system is capable of running the games at high definition. Now this is really great for modern televisions, and honestly for classic hardcore gamers like myself, this is something we've been looking for for a very long time. There's been a number of emulation systems out there that have attempted to run games in a very kind of okay way, but there usually is some kind of delay or issue with the emulation that you really can't get around. And when it comes 
comes to clone systems that are just basically systems on a chip, well, they tend to run Super Nintendo games pretty well, but the compatibility is kind of falling off. You don't really get the best quality, and in some instances, you don't even get high definition. But with this system, what you're getting is the best aspects of emulation and the best aspects of a clone system all in one. The console is loaded with a bunch of options and settings that you can tweak while you're playing your games. And this is a great feature because sometimes on other systems that I've played that have given you options that are similar to this, you'd actually have to turn the game off and reset the system. But from here, no matter what game you're playing, you can go right into the options and adjust anything. And this is really good because in the background you can see the game still being run and you can see any of the visual options you're setting being set live as they get turned on. Most of the options in the menu are focused on visual Visuals, so adjusting the resolution, cropping the image, or even putting in scan lines if you want. And there's also other options like audio settings, like being able to turn on cartridge specific sound effects like you'd find on a Super Game Boy. And all this stuff does work quite well. But unfortunately, one thing you won't be able to do is utilize save states built right into the system. This is something that I really wanted to see, but due to the way that this is built at this current moment, it's not something that they've implemented. Maybe in the future with an update, they'll give you the ability to have save states right into the console itself, but at the point that I went to record this video, they just didn't have an option like that. But that's something I really like about this system. A clone console usually just is what it is, and it's never going to see an update. And emulation systems, at least the ones I've played lately, haven't really been the greatest machines in the world and have actually had a lot of stuff within them stolen from proper developers that have put a lot of time and effort into making emulation software. But with the Super NT, the folks at Analog made everything that you're looking at right now. That that means that they're capable of upgrading the system over time with software updates that can make things run so much better. Maybe there's a game out there that I haven't played that doesn't run very well, but if they find out about it, they can fix it through a software update that they can utilize through the SD card reader slot. Heck, in the future, they might even be able to make that SD card reader slot run ROMs and stuff like that if you want as well. That's what makes this so interesting. It's a company that has already had a proven track record of making really good hardware and awesome updates, so I think you're going to see a lot more interesting things happen with this console in the future. For example, if they were to make an update for the system that allowed you to sample specific layers from a game that was running and just see that one individual layer. Like looking at Star Fox and only seeing the 3D polygons, or playing Super Mario Kart and only seeing the Mode 7 graphics. Yeah, it might be a little bit weird, but it would be really cool to see a system capable of doing that kind of stuff. Or they could even create software updates for physical items on the system, like that really cool LED at the front of the console. Now, like I said earlier, I believe there's a reason why you should be getting the clear version of the system, and here's the reason why. The LED on the front of the system is capable of going through a whole range of colors, and in the options menu, you can set it so that it samples the center pixel of whatever game you're playing, or basically whatever's coming up on the system. That means that whatever's there, the LED will go to that color. So when you play a game, like, I don't know, Earthbound, the very beginning has that really cool statically look and your system will actually light up in real time to match that image. It's really, really awesome. And maybe in the future they can update the LED to do even more things. This is the kind of stuff that software updates can grant you that you don't get with other systems. So is the analog Super NT better than an original Super NES? Well, I think it is. This system does everything the Super NES does and a whole lot more. It gives you more control, more abilities, and well, it just looks great on modern televisions where an original Super NES simply can't. You are losing the ability to run this on older televisions unless you can convert the HDMI out, but realistically, I don't think many people really care about that anymore. This feels like a real Super Nintendo. It feels like you're playing it on a real system on your modern TV, and I think that ability really goes beyond beyond anything that anyone was expecting from this console. So if you had the chance and you really want to get something amazing, get yourself an analog Super NT. If you're a fan of the Super Nintendo, you won't regret it.